I'm Barb Claggett. Today I have a special story for everyone about some very special people called the Kasi who live in faraway India right now. They are Unitarians just like us, and we at East Shore have been their partners for the past 15 years. This coming Saturday, August 29th, from 4 to 5.30, our Kasi Hills team at church is holding a really fun virtual fundraiser to help pay salaries for the teachers in their local English-speaking school. The Kasis believe that educating their children is the most important thing they can do. We hope you'll be on the Zoom call on Saturday where you'll see lots of photos and videos of these people and have a chance to help them out. The story I'm about to tell you took place many years ago, maybe when your grandparents were growing up or even earlier, but it really happened. You'll see how one woman made a big difference in the lives of certain Kasi people whose children and grandchildren are living right now in the very village that we at Ishore are connected to. About 85 years ago, a British woman named Annie Margaret Barr moved from her home in England to the country of India. Here's a map of the whole country. The Kasis live way up in the northeast part in a remote part of India. Why would she be going there? Kongbar, for that is what she was called by the Kasis, had heard about the Kasis and many of them and how many of them were Unitarians, just as she was. Their leaders had asked British Unitarian leaders to come and help them. She knew that many Kasi children didn't have schools to go to as yet and felt a very strong call to come and live with them and work with them. She never regretted her decision. She loved children and devoted her life to teaching them in some unusual ways for those times. Let's take a look. Led by a Kasi guide, Kongbar walked miles and miles to get to a particular Kasi village that she'd heard of. She carried just a small backpack. Along the way, she started picking up some Kasi phrases like blay, which means God, or kuble, meaning God be with you, or hello. Finally arriving in the village she was seeking, Kongbar managed to get a piece of land for her own house, and her Kasi friends helped her build it. Many people liked her and wanted her to teach their children. Kongbar kept learning their very different, difficult language, also called Kasi, and often attended their Unitarian church services. In her house, she made sure that there was room for children, including a dorm for boys and another for girls. Where was the classroom? The kitchen floor. They sat on low stools and wrote notes with chalk on slates. What would they do for food? They helped grow their own food in the garden. Every day, every student helped work in the garden, planting, weeding, and watering, and then harvesting the vegetables. Kongbar also had some pigs, cows, and chickens in the shed outside. The boys milked the cows and fed the pigs. The girls heated water for tea over an open fire, fed the chickens, and gathered eggs every day from the hens. Then they all took turns helping Kongbar prepare meals and wash the dishes after each meal. Somebody had to do the laundry, too, all by handy, by hand. And then there was sweeping the floors every day. Who organized the work? Every day a student was chosen to be head housekeeper. They kept daily charts for the work done and even had a chart for stars that they could see at night. Everyone got up at 4 a.m. when it was still dark. After tea, with a prayer and a song, They'd make breakfast and then would clean up the kitchen to get ready for three hours of classes on the kitchen floor. After lessons and lunch, they worked in the garden and collected eggs. Supper was at four. Then students studied their lessons and had more prayers. Everyone, except maybe Kongbar herself, was in bed by eight. She was busy preparing school lessons for the next day. On weekends, there were no classes, but there were still chores to be done. Some students went back to their homes for a day or two. 
Saturday night there would be games, singing, and dancing. Sunday evening they gathered for a church service with students leading it according to their own religions. You didn't need to be a Unitarian to go to Kongbar's school. But what about school? How did she teach them? By starting where they were and using a lot of imagination and creativity. They learned to read and write in their own Kasi language and to speak, read, and write English. They also learned history, geography, math, and science. She told them special stories, played games with them, and taught them how to do crossword puzzles. They sang special songs and worked on group projects together. The students responded quickly, and at the end of each school year, they did very well in state tests that they had to take to go on to the next level. The children who came to Kongbar School to live, work, and study could be as young as five and as old as 18. Most were girls, but boys came too. They were all eager to learn from Kongbar, and they respected her. She loved them. She made sure they worked hard in their classes and on their chores. They learned to be responsible and helpful and to think of others. After a few years of classes, some of the older students were able to teach the younger ones, and then Kong Bar would meet with the older ones later each day and give them special lessons. After being in her school for several years, most of the students went on to more specialized schools in other towns and cities in India. Kong Bar helped them find the right schools. Some became midwives delivering babies in surrounding villages and saving many lives. Some became nurses working in hospitals or clinics in bigger towns and cities. Many became teachers. Just a dozen years ago, two of her former students, each with many years of teaching experience, started the friendship school that we at East Shore Unitarian are now helping to support in many ways. Two years ago, when I traveled to India and interviewed 13 of Kongbar's students as older adults, they all spoke with her with great love and gratitude. They told me that without her help and love, they would still be out there working in the fields. Instead, they were, and still are, helping others in wonderful ways. Yes, Annie Margaret Barr did indeed love children and made a huge difference in how they lived their lives. When they grew up, all of them made sure the children around them got a good education and they worked hard to be contributors to their people. And that is still going on today in our partner church and at the Friendship School that East Shore helps support in Northeast India. <laughs>